Hi everybody, this is Dr. Katiswalu Banzajiri Rukati, founder of Zilaloa. Zilaloa is a modern of academy of African traditional spirituality. This academy comprises two branches. A research branch called Institut des Sciences Animiques and an initiatory branch called also Zilaloa. Today we have chosen to speak about the scientific foundation of African traditional ethics. The ideas of this video has been taken inspired by this book titled Bukongo, which is available at Amazon.com in ebook or has a paper book. What is the importance of handling the issue? of ethics. Firstly, we live in the context where the dominant Western civilization tries by all means to impose its value, which entails our immersion in materialism very nearly. Secondly, the African is said to be incurably spiritual minded and I believe in this. Thirdly, new discovery, new discoveries in the domain of theology teach us that in its Egyptian, Sumerian, Nubian origin, the African traditional religion is a science, even an exact science. And this science has marked all the aspects of our culture. The intrusion of Western culture inaugurated by the Persian, the Greeks and the Roman has replaced this religion science by a religion belief because in the West religion is defined is perceived as a mere system of belief and this has detrimental consequence on ethics. This intrusion of Western materialism has led to an amnesia where many Africans see black ethics only in terms of secular humanism. Thus, it is very important for us to demonstrate, to reaffirm the scientific basis of African traditional ethics. The great tool for this endeavor is the chemical cosmological argument. We can introduce this argument in this way. This temporal universe is an individual entity. Therefore, it is the work of an individual creator. Let's use an hypothesis here just for the sake of concision. Every creation exists in its creator. Since the creator of this temporal universe is an individual entity, there might be other creators who are at least potentially creative. They might have not yet created the universe, but they exist in the infinite range of possibilities. If we take an entity who is the sum total of all these potential and manifest creators, we have an entity who is the greatest possible being. Because remember, every creation exists in its creator. These greatest possible entities is called God. In Bukongo, in Kaka region, he is Nzambi Ampungu Tulilendo. Now, being the greatest possible entity, Nzambi Ampungu Tulilendo 
he is the greatest possible reality. He is transcendent, indivisible, and immutable. Because any lesser nature will invite the principle of his divisibility and mutability, and that principle must be greater than the greatest possible being, which is impossible. Therefore, Zambian Pungu Toledo is transcendent, indivisible, and immutable. We know that every creator expresses an individuality included in the indivisible Zambian Pungu Toledo. Therefore, every creator expresses the whole of Zambian Pungu Toledo, but in an individual manner. Let's call this fullness, this wholeness, the Logos. So we have three entities. We have Zambian Pungu Tulendo, God the Supreme Being. We have the Creator, or we are called also the Children of God, or the Loas. Loas, because they manifest the full glory of Zambian Pungu Tulendo. They are like stars, like suns. And we have the Logos. Now the question is, where is the temporal universe in relation to Zambian Pungu Toledo, the greatest possible being? The temporal universe cannot be outside of Zambian Pungu Toledo because he is the greatest possible reality. So no reality can be added to here. The temporal universe cannot be in Zambian Pungu Toledo because he is absolutely immutable. Nothing in him can go to potential to manifest existence. But we know that the temporal universe exists in its creator. Therefore, we arrive to the conclusion that the temporal universe is only an appearance of the celestial reality, the reality of the Pongo in the temporal consciousness of the creator. It ensures an anthropology where every being, every human being in the temporal universe is only the manifestation, a limited appearance, a limited manifestation of his reality in the celestial realm as a lowest child of God. You and I are in reality lowest children of God. If we take the children of God around one of them, these ch children of God constitute a collective child of God. And that collective child of God expresses also the Logos. So the Logos is the fullness of God in the child of God and around the child of God. It then follows that the Logos is in the Muntu and around the Muntu. In other words, each Muntu is the good which is in him, but he, also, he is also the good that surrounds him. I can put, in, put it in other words, you and I are the good we are spiritually conscious in us, but also the good we are spiritually conscious around us. On the ethical level, this double nature of the moon to imply that how a concern for the I must necessarily imply a concern for the us. This means that Ubuntu is not a mere social humanitarian construction. Ubuntu is a spiritual scientific demand inseparable from the Ubuntu. Now, the other point is that God is good. If God were good and evil, 
due to his indivisibility, he will be infinitely good and infinitely evil, infinitely bad, which will entail violation of the law of harmony and the law of no contradiction. So God is good. Thus, good being God, the principle of Ubuntu require of the moon to not only to manifest the, his highest norm of the good, but also to work for the manifestation of that highest good in his surrounding without violating the free will of others. So the principle of Ubuntu is not a mere social humanitarian construction. It is a scientific spiritual demand which is imposed in each one of us. And to bring back this scientific ethic is a big demand on you and me. If you enjoy the artists of this video, please become one of our followers. Thank you and see you later.